I want to bring in now Dr. Tyson Bell. He is Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Divisions of Infectious Disease and Pulmonary Critical Care Medicine at the University of Virginia. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. And you actually received the Pfizer vaccine this week. Uh, how are you feeling? Sure. I received the vaccine on Tuesday, and right afterwards, I had a little bit of injection site pain, which I pretty much expected. It happens with every vaccine that I receive. And then uh, Wednesday, I had a little bit of arm soreness, but completely back to normal now. So feel, feel great. Well, that is wonderful to hear. Um, now, we, we, of course, have this Moderna vaccine. Um, we're waiting for emergency authorization on that vaccine. What uh, excites you most about the second vaccine coming to the U.S.? Well, yeah, what I do like about the Moderna vaccine is that it doesn't have as difficult the storage requirements as a Pfizer vaccine, um, despite the fact that they do have similar efficacy and safety profiles. So I'm thinking the Moderna vaccine would be a good alternative for regions that may not have the ultra cold storage freezer capabilities, like large hospital systems, for instance, like where I work. So I'm thinking neighborhood clinics, rural areas, underserved areas, this would be a good alternative because it's easier to store in more conventional freezers. Uh, so the latest numbers, doctor, show that a growing number of Americans are feeling better about taking the vaccine. I believe now 71 percent of those surveyed have indicated they will receive the vaccine when it's available to them. But there are still a number of people out there who are hesitant. One of the big worries is how quickly the vaccine came to market. You yourself took the vaccine just a couple of days ago. What would you say to those people who are still on the fence? Sure. So I've gotten a lot of questions about this, and it is true that we were able to develop this vaccine and multiple other products are coming online, too, potentially, um, in the course of a year when most vaccines will take upwards to four to five years to develop. So why is that the case? I think a few things to remember. Uh, first of all, the technology is new to a vaccine platform, but mRNA technology was being used and studied even in the SARS and MERS pandemics. And the discoveries from that period led to the ability to rapidly accelerate development now. And Operation Warp Speed poured a lot of investment into it that allowed us to really accelerate that process. The clinical trials were able to be enrolled in relatively quickly because unfortunately the pandemic has been surging, so they were able to meet their endpoints quickly. They also collaborated across sites that we had similar efficacy endpoints for the vaccine trials. And then third, the distribution happened alongside the ongoing of the clinical trials. So by the time approval happened, Pfizer was able to ship out vaccine over the weekend, and that's why I was able to get it so quickly after approval. Um, did, Important thing to remember is that the science has not been cut short. So the independent advisory committees that oversee the science and distribution and approval, that would be the, the uh, study site and investigators and our independent boards that oversee vaccine safety, uh, that stayed intact. The FDA advisory committee, which just voted to recommend approval for EUA. And then the uh, ASEP, which is the uh, advisory committee for immune practices housed in the CDC. These are all independent experts who would be involved in any vaccine approval process who have maintained the scientific integrity of this whole process. So, Doctor, uh, there are reports that about a million people have already been vaccinated. I know when you look at the overall population, that seems like a small number, but we've got to start somewhere. What happens to mask wearing as more and more of us do become vaccinated? Do you see us wearing masks well into 2021? I do anticipate that, unfortunately. Uh, it, you know, it's going to take a while for us to finally turn the corner on the pandemic. We do need to achieve this level of what we call herd immunity, where the vast majority of Americans are protected, and that may protect the ones who may not be able to receive vaccination for whatever reason. Uh, but in the meantime, we do have to stick with public health practices. What about colleagues of yours who have, who have gotten the vaccine? Now, we've heard about these um, these incidents, I don't know how isolated they are, that people have had allergic reactions to the vaccine. Um, have you seen any more serious side effects from the vaccine personally? Uh, we haven't seen any in our health system so far. There are the well-publicized two cases in the UK and the two in Alaska that had reactions that would seem in most instances to be anaphylaxis. 
And for that reason, people who have a history of anaphylactic reactions, there is a, a precaution. Um, they can be allowed to proceed with vaccination. The only contraindication is actually people who have anaphylactic reaction to known components of the vaccine itself. Um, one important thing to mention is that we do have an expectation that people will get reactions to the vaccine immediately after in the normal circumstance. So Globally, about 1.3 in every million vaccines is associated with adverse event that includes anaphylaxis immediately upon administration. So we'll learn in the coming days and weeks whether this is a true signal or if it's more sort of par for the course. But in the meantime, the recommendation to monitor someone after they've received the vaccination for 30 minutes if they've had a history of anaphylaxis or 15 minutes otherwise is exactly what we should be doing. And, and, um, and thankfully these workers were being monitored and were able to be managed appropriately. Now, I understand the way these vaccines work is there are two doses given within weeks of each other. When are you uh, set to get your second dose? And, and might someone not be allergic to, to the first dose, but experience some other side effects upon the second dose? That's a really good question. And one thing to point out is that in these trials, many of the people who had these adverse events and, and side effects, they were reported after the second dose. Uh, so in the case of the Pfizer vaccine, it's separated by 21 days. And then for Moderna, it's 28 days. In that interim period, there is a measure of protection that they were able to demonstrate that didn't rise to that full 95% efficacy in, in both cases. Uh, so it is important to get that second vaccine dose. But that one, um, you know, we should talk around that time because if I do have side effects, I would expect it to happen with that second dose. All right, Dr. Tyson Bell of the University of Virginia, thanks so much for spending time with us. Thank you and happy holidays.